weather, um, heat that we haven't had, and, and extreme dryness. So here's some examples of different you know, fungal networks in action. Um, so when you go on your hikes and you see these cute little mushrooms, they're actually really important to the soil carbon sponge, and we certainly want to incentivize them over this. All right, so when you biodegrade all that in the forest system or, or in your garden or whatever, whatever it is, you have less standing matter. So when fire does come through, it doesn't burn as hot and it can skirt over the landscape as opposed to mm -hmm. going up into the trees. Um, and I've seen this, uh, somebody mentioned our website, soilcentric.org. Um, I produced a video in association with Fiber Shed a couple of years ago, and we went out to Lake County, and there was a prop two properties side by side. On one side, there had been grazing, and on the other side, there hadn't been. And the side where the grazing had not occurred, the fire had gone way up and gone um, to the tippy tops of the oak trees, and it'll take 500 years to recover. On the side where there had been grazing um, that was, you know, appropriate and, and managed well, um, the fire looked like it had never happened. It's, it's really quite dramatic. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> just want to talk about why the soil carbon sponge is so important. It gives us water, um, nutrient cycling, rootability, which is a made up word, but it means that the roots can get down and, and hold that carbon at depth. Um, we have the microbial ecology, that, that means the life in the soil. Um, of course, these systems are more productive and they're moist, so they're more resilient. Um, all right, so I need a volunteer. <laughs> and if I don't get one, I'm, oh, I've got one. Goody. All right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna demonstrate the soil carbon sponge. All right. I might need two volunteers. Trudy, you want to be my other volunteer? <laughs> okay. So, on one side, we are going to have bread. Okay? I'm going to give you a paper plate, two slices of bread, and you're going to hold it. And then on the other side, we're going to have team flour. There's some flour, <laughs> there's a plate. see how this silly experiment shows you about the soil carbon sponge. All right, that's flour, that's bread, and here we have our rain. Here it comes. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to take our rain and we're going to give yes. okay. something that absorbs. <laughs> we're going to be scientific about this. We're going to give each side the same amount of water.
Sorry, Each. <laughs> My only recommendation is to get a couple more holes in your Dixie cup than I did. Um, all right, so good clicker. Okay, so what can you guys do in your gardens to um, regenerate your soil sponge? Well, um, certainly plant perennials because perennial roots, as you know, go way down and um, the carbon at depth is very stable. So the difference between an annual and a perennial in terms of carbon sequestration is dramatic. Um, you know about planting for pollinators, with being friendly um, planting natives. Um, you want to harvest your rainwater if you can. You can have swales, you can have you know, um, all sorts of barrels and so forth. Uh, you want to be pesticide free, as Dan was mentioning. Pesticides really have so many detriment detrimental effects, especially to songbirds and other pollinators. Um, fertilizer is so GHG intensive to produce. Um, it might not seem it when you put it on your lawn, but actually, it you know the nitrous oxide associated with um, fertilizer is intense. Um, and then you want to avoid your leaf blowers because you're really destroying all sorts of habitat when you use those um, GHG intensive tools. Um, and sometimes people think that it looks very neat to have everything blown away, but what you're doing is you're, you're disturbing the habitat for the beneficials. Is the gas powered blower really going to be any different than raking and scraping everything away? Um, well, you don't want to scrape everything away, no. Um, but in terms of GHG avoidance, um, raking certainly doesn't have the carbon footprint that, it, that a um, gas-powered powered mower has. Um, you want to avoid paving over things because when you do, then you get that flower response. Things just run off and they don't go down into the sponge. Um, you want to keep your soil covered. Think of soil as the skin of the earth. Um, it needs to be covered. That's why nature's always trying to cover things with leaves and, and weeds and so forth. Um, compost your food scraps and your yard trimmings and avoid disturbing the soil because the, um, when you plow and till and, and really churn up the soil, um, you're just ruining the structure of it. Thank you very much, and you can learn more about um, our organization at soilcentric.org.